Every single one of my friends underestimated their achievements in 2023. And this is a series of podcasts where I try to help them redefine what achievement looks like from that corporate business productivity mindset more towards a game design mindset. I gave my friends a week to list out every achievement they made, both big and small, in 2023. And the thing is, no one gave me a list that was more than 10 things. It did not make any fucking sense. When I think about it, we have 52 weeks in a year, and the friends that I chose to do this with live amazing lives that are honestly like really inspiring to me, but they never give themselves the credit for the things that they've done or experienced. To shift Derek's mindset, I helped him expand his short list of things that he had done using my Octacore framework. It's each area of life we can find fulfillment in that I've built into a Notion app that I've been using to understand, organize, and optimize every area of my life. Derek is a software engineer at Air New Zealand. He also runs a Flint podcast discussing important trends in tech, and he has his own YouTube channel where he shares his expert knowledge in everything AI. Getting into the podcast, this is everything Derek achieved in 2023. <laughs> What's the name of the podcast, bro? I don't even fucking know. <laughs> we don't ever know. But this... What is it? Mean, mean chats, chat. bro. Mean <laughs> chats. Okay, that's it. Well, welcome the... back to mean chats. <laughs> welcome back to the mean chats. Is it? Is it even welcome back? Because this is the first. This is the first time. So, what I wanted to do with you for so long is just to like, literally highlight all of the things that we've gone through in the year. Yes. On the achievements board, and literally see like, what has your year been in relation to special? Yes. And all the course. categories. Yeah. I'm curious, like, how you feel about the distribution of these. Yeah, first of all, like, the task of introspecting the whole year is is gr huge in itself. Mm. And so, you know, one may go a normal traditional route where you just jot down all the things, but yeah. how can you even categorize something or understand the learnings from that? Like, you've got a bunch of stuff about what happened in the year, mm. and then to break down really understanding the lessons in between those even more difficult so yeah. to view this template which you've built a notion which is amazing man thanks man. the ability to break it down and not only see the different categories but the colors which are amazing <laughs> and a index or a, a guide to what each of those categories and colors are through that the act of jotting down everything that happened this year was both fun was both introspective and look at it. It's all visualized here for us to to break down. <laughs> it looks really cool. I guess I want to go start off with the tier list of memories because I saw yeah. I saw you fill out all of these in terms of special. Yeah. And I'm wondering what have been the most fulfilling to you? Right there, two of the greatest strength categories, which are healthiest and leanest I've yeah. ever been. And just to view, like if I my younger self was looking at me right now. Mm this kid would be so happy, so proud. Yeah. Like, looking at my ability. Um, obviously, I'm not the strongest, nor mm. the fittest, um, in comparison to a lot of people. But I'm, for me, I'm, I'm happy. And I'm looking good. I'm looking, I'm feeling good. Let's go. And that's huge achievements that I think it's good to acknowledge this year. So, healthiest you've been, leanest you've been, was both strength. The other thing that came up in strength is being consistent with the gym. Yes. So, how is... How is it compared to what you were doing before? It's it's both a phase in life where in adulthood you go to work, you come back, mm. um, and it's quite consistent. Mm. So in that sense, consistency is easy. It's only a matter of discipline. But when you're in final year engineering, which is what I was, or if you were traveling or if any other situation, it's hard to be gym focused three times a week, going to Got basketball uh, once a week. So. I have to attribute the consistencies to maybe the routine of life this year, which was good, mm. but a lot of discipline, man. God, there's a lot of times where I didn't want to go to the gym and then like David Goggins or, yes. or any other type of influence would be like in my head. Or, you know, I actually utilized TikTok yeah. early in the year. No, I don't do it anymore. Where I would like watch gym videos of like, discipline is the greatest form of self-love like yeah how like you, you, life is so rare in existence like you need to like acknowledge its potential so you have to go to the gym yeah like, those kind of videos and i'd be like what am i worrying about let's go rip myself <laughs> <laughs> um those moments obviously it's not sustainable i think just dis discipline was the greatest lesson in that mm. yeah. i guess but like seeing it's a great from the visualization I yeah love this. yeah because it shows 
like just having it in a special framework shows the values. Like mm. these are these are your biggest memories. Yeah. And within special, I think I rank life force the highest and strength the second. So yeah. it's like uh, physical, uh, mental first, physical second in terms of health, Fantastic. because yeah. they're both the foundation of how we can apply uh, energy and power to all the other areas of life. Mm. And if we don't have that, then there's really nothing. I mean, special, I made special in terms of like a framework for us to find fulfillment. And if we fill in those two buckets, it pours into everything else. Really, hundred uh, percent. You would you would agree those are the foundations, mm. right? It's like how they say sleep mm. is the foundation to every good health and every focus and everything yeah. that you will do. It's the same. Like your life force and your strength mm. in this framework flows on to the contributions, the attachments, the creativity. That's yeah. Everything else, like without those, how can you attribute any success in any other areas? That's actually really interesting. That yeah. your highest achievements throughout the year have been. So I categorize them into essential and elevating attributes. Yeah. So essential is self-explanatory. They're essential to our fulfillment. Yeah. And then elevating is everything else, like uh, creativity, experience, persistence, and intelligence. So uh, you're learning, going out, doing hobbies life maintenance and also buying things, mm. uh, buying possessions. Well, the thing is your framework like helped me realize uh, that uh, subconsciously. Yeah. Like maybe it's something, like I said, in the traditional sense, if you write it down in a drop list, mm. you can't really see those things. But when you look at it in this view yeah. point, I am uh, subconsciously good guided into fulfilling in these like things such as leanest i've ever been healthiest i've ever been mm -hmm. you know being consistent in the gym and then those when i rank them obviously they're going to be the top yeah the top things right yeah. so it's it helped actually i want to know is there anything that you wish you did that would have like fallen within this category i would say i wish i was more uh consistent with my youtube channel because mm. i was I had a really unfair advantage with my work and my knowledge. Yeah. And where I applied discipline in the gym, I did not apply discipline in producing uh, YouTube videos. Yeah. And I could have done a lot more and potentially gained uh, more experience or more of a following, although that's not really something I, I worry about. Mm. But I could have. So I wish I could have been higher in the list, but I, you know, I'm still grateful. Yeah. Because if, let's say you did do that, what would be the trade-off of one of these? Because I, I don't think, even think it would yeah. be a trade-off. Because You don't think so? Yeah, I mean, it would just have been another achievement mm. at the top. I think the biggest thing that happened with you, I'm, I'm surprised that your um, journaling didn't hit higher because I think... I think Ooh, that... Yeah. I guess that yeah, yeah. You, you put that on uh, down here, gratitude, gratitude mm. journaling every yeah, day, yeah. so it's lower, but... I feel like that was the gateway into you being able to start a relationship with someone. In all honesty, like now that you say it, I think uh, just I think it deserves to go to the top. Okay, so let's, what let's change that in in live. Yeah, gratitude journey every day. Let's go. Look at that. Yeah. We added another one because I felt like <laughs> you going through that phase, like when we first started habit tracking kings, just the simple act of doing one line mm. of gratitude journaling every day. I saw the changes within you in like weeks it was so fast it's so powerful you say that and i and i i've used this term so many times and you probably uh, have realized it i say i'm grateful right yeah I, before like f i think i've clocked in 475 days like straight on gratitude journal right? that's so cool and man. so essentially what i've done is reprogrammed my negativity bias mm. and i'm so gr grateful that i've done that because <laughs> i can just view things and be gr just have gratitude pour out of any yeah. situation so thank you thank you for helping me i appreciate that man and yeah you helped me the same um just by kind of holding each other accountable to doing that every single day and then like sending through on the snapshot of all the things um what was my one i think i had to do uh one creative task every day oh i had to open up my uh software every day yes. yeah, for yeah. the thing and yeah so i did that and then joseph opened up his uh vs code i think i just his coding it. software what i love the most is that we ground our habits or ground our growth in books that teach us this mm. so we took the idea of um least 
a minimal friction to start a habit. Yeah. Make it the easiest thing possible so it's stupid that you miss out yeah. on that habit, right? That was from Atomic Habits. Yeah. And then other aspects maybe of the relationship and other things like you, you, we sourced from books mm. where you're the superior man or eight Ooh, rules yes. of love or whatever. So there was uh, Kaizen and then there was um, Atomic Habits, which kind of fall into those categories of making it laughably easy. And the thing I remember, especially in terms of like trying to get those first initial habits done was when you, <laughs> when we were all in a group and we're like figuring out, oh, what is the like one thing we're going to do every single day? Yeah. And I remember Joseph, he's like, oh, I'm going to do like 10 minutes of coding. Oh, I'm gonna go. Actually, I can do like 20 minutes. I was like, how much have you done in like the last month? He's like, oh, I've probably done like probably done like two hours of the last <laughs> yeah. one. and i was like, like nah make it make can... it lower make it lower yeah. make it lower but then after he i guess like humbled himself and we all did because i was like oh i could do so much more like yeah. i could do In 10 minutes moment, of editing of course, da, da, da. Yeah, yeah. um we humbled ourselves so much because there were times where it's like man it, i actually found it a struggle just to open my software for one day but Knowing that you did that, knowing that you kept the streak going, mm. just builds yourself a lot of confidence in which if you just watch these videos of motivation from people mm. like David Goggins, from people who are so far above you in terms of their their base of discipline, yeah, it's there's nothing you can compare that to apart from yourself. And this is actually, when I think of the whole concept of like comparing yourself to only yourself. Mm. I always thought like, oh yeah, people just say that, you know? Yeah. People just say that because that's the right thing to do. But now that, especially since I discovered the whole parent-child relationship frame this year, now I realize the purpose of only comparing yourself to yourself because it's like you're comparing the standards of your inner child exactly. to yeah. them. And it's like, imagine if you compared your own child to all of these amazing celebrities how would they feel that's, internally that's also a facade yeah you only are seeing the uh, top level of what they're presenting to you yeah you don't know the internal workings of their mind and what traumas they're trying to go oh, through, man. the insecurities they have and so that's uh, yeah of course even the only yeah. person you can compare yourself to is yourself that's mm. the only person and that's probably the hardest thing to do in this age even though like <laughs> just just saying that it's like wow it's such a privilege that we have this is the kind of thing that we're dealing with yeah that's that's crazy <laughs> oh my god i guess the other thing i want to highlight one year of sobriety dude one year of sobriety yeah that's... and that when did you hit that in this in year in july this year in july yeah fuck so it's been it's almost it's been a year and a half now Pretty yeah, much. well, the lessons were that I've given up all forms of recreational drug mm. and I um, am severely reduced my alcohol intake mm. to the point where it's only like one drink per mm. week at most. And even next year, I'm going to set myself a goal that I just don't even need to yeah. have it at all. What is the point? That's solid, man. That's yeah. solid. What has it taught you not only about yourself, but about how other people perceive your sobriety? First of all, it's an illusion to think that you're going to miss out mm. on uh, experiences. In fact, it, it truly grounds you into the experience and really makes you value what you want. Because what alcohol recreational drugs actually end up doing is mm. you may yourself may not actually want to be in the situation, but you are numbing yourself with either poison or you're clouding yourself with cannabis or you're completely like changing your reality with psilocybin yeah and doing these experiences that you otherwise wouldn't have chosen in your sober self so you actually make conscious choices and when you do and you do them sober and you enjoy them oh man let me just tell you because i've done all the stuff i'm talking from experience <laughs> i'm not one of those people that is high on their horse somewhere i've never done a drug and i'm not going to yeah. No, i've done all of them yeah and i'm telling you the sober mind is better yeah once you experience that and that's mm. what i learned what is because because i think it's very there's something that happens that yeah. makes you fall into that category of you're like you no longer look at these things as as something that brings you comfort and mm. instead you look at the pain that it brings and so what was the turning point of that it was People. when i got anxiety mm. from cannabis it was when i was uh 
cognitive dissonance to my future self of what I wanted from myself to what I was doing. Mm. It was the my health at yep. that point, you know, seeing the inflammation and the extra carbs and the things, you know, the, the reason why the one of the, the healthiest and leanest I've ever been. Yeah. Is because of the sober year. Ah, I see. <laughs> a huge part. When you cut yeah. all that alcohol, when you cut all those drugs, you really force yourself. And then you, and then the inner voice in your head is loud. Mm. Oh man, I didn't realize how much I was numbing that. Ooh, and yeah. so yeah. then I first had to go on a healing journey to realize that. Once I got comfortable in my own head, <laughs> then I would be disciplined. And then the focus that you get, the discipline that you get, this better the sleep that you get. And we know all how eight hours of sleep fundamentally. Yeah. You know, like it's, I love this quote or I love this situation. There's this pill. It increases your metabolism. It heals all your muscles, all your pains. It replenishes your mind. It f gives you better focus. It gives you better uh, libido. Your health will exponentially increase. Would you take this? Mm. Definitely. 100%. Who wouldn't? It's eight hours of sleep. Oh, sorry. I don't want <laughs> nah, to do that. Nah, 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 nah. None of that anymore. <laughs> How stupid. Why have we villainized sleep, you know? Mm. Do that and you will see life-changing benefits. Yeah. And that comes because of sobriety. Because what alcohol does is that it ruins your sleep. Mm. So bad. Or any drug, really. The next thing that pops into my mind when I look at this list, especially on the gold level, is the Flint podcasts. Ooh, yes. And dude, I love listening to them. Oh, I was you. I was mad you didn't send us the last stuff oh, thing. I had to discover that myself, but it was really interesting. Which one was that? Um, AI I think no, it was uh, using AI for learning or something. Um, online learning. Online learning. But there we actually, go. there is another one that released uh, j just a few days ago. Asshole. <laughs> Bro, I need to <laughs> send, send it in the chat, I man. Know, no, the thing was I was quite busy. I will, yeah, I will yeah. send it. That's um, fair. The reason why I started this podcast was first because I wanted to do something on my own. Mm. But within this network, I had the resources and I had the people that I could delegate the task to. Yeah. Because it's actually really hard. Look at what we're doing right here. It's yeah. a lot. This is just one aspect. Then there's the filming and editing. Then yeah. there's the post-production. But even before, if you're conscientious, mm. you're going to do the writing and really plan out what the talk is. Mm. So it's a lot. Yeah. It's right. Mad. So it, just, it was a testing the waters um, and it's going well so far. How has it strengthened your relationships with the other people in the podcast? Because they're not all within New Zealand, are they? They're from different... Nah, it's, it's different aspects. It's really good. Yeah. I, I enjoy it. I think when you say it, I'm now really grateful for those two <laughs> because um, they're both really intelligible in their own aspects. Mm. This is Caius and... Caius and Caitlin. Yeah. And we are, are also very diverse in all our mindsets. Mm. And we come together and we do what we need to do. Mm. So Caitlin deals with the post-production, I deal with the editing, yep. and Kais deals with the recording. Gotcha. So the distribution is, is there and it's good. Actually, this is what I'm very proud of you from, uh, the YouTube channel, like yeah. starting the whole YouTube channel <laughs> thing, man. That was solid, bro. That was solid. The growth that you made was like exponential within each video. Yeah. And it got to the point where I was like, can you show me how you did that? <laughs> and I was like, well, this guy's making moves. Yeah. I um. You, there's a there's a lesson in anything that you do mm. when you produce when you when you produce something yeah. it's like make the next one better than the the last and maybe i went a bit too hard and now i haven't been able to be consistent because i've been like okay i really need to improve and i've been making leaps and that's why i haven't been consistent so i need to take a bit of a lesson and make it a bit more consistent okay but just improve each time learn one thing incorporate it yeah 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 okay what have you felt like it's it's taught you in terms of like articulation of your thoughts and how to go about oh. the editing process things especially like um trying to hold off from being such a perfectionist especially because i know that's so many definitely lessons, you so many incredible lessons oh uh, first of all yeah y you can't be perfect so mm. produce crap yeah. and iterate each time yeah and over over the course of a, a year you're gonna improve Right, like there's the the classic. Uh, it's 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 a classic um, scenario mm. that is presented to everyone. There was a class of students. Yeah. One cl one one class got asked to produce a uh, thirty different pieces of artwork. Yep. And be graded. These were pots. We, yeah, pots. The clay pots. You know uh, molding the clay pots. One yeah. was told to just produce one mm. in one month. Guess which produced better. 
the class who did more. The class who did more. They the did, did 30, more. they were iterating, they were changing, they were being diverse. Mm -hmm. And the one that got stuck in the perfectionism loop or the hole or whatever tunnel you call it, that's, they, they, were, they were stuck and they didn't actually improve. So mm -hmm. that's the biggest lesson. But also, you really know something when you create it. Yes. Like there, you can consume as much content as you want yeah. and you can absorb as much information as you want, mm. but that will all be filtered when you sleep yeah. and washed away mm. if you don't really push through the friction of creating. Mm. It's creating forces you to recall that information for you to present it in a general way yeah. and validate what you've learned is true. So that was the true power of that YouTube channel. It was validating what I had learned. Mm. Because anyone can listen to a podcast and watch a YouTube video and think they're an expert. But really, the true experts are the ones that create on what they know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. I actually forgot to touch on the relationship with the Ratisha. Yeah, that's on probably the highest one of the tier. hugest things. Yeah. Yeah. I, one of the greatest, uh, one of the greatest things that probably has happened to me mm. this year and I, yeah, I'm so great, so grateful. It's everything I wanted in a in a dream woman. Yeah, is Ratisha. Yeah, uh, and I and I don't even think it's a it's like a little, little rose tinted glasses, and I don't think it's like love is blind stuff. I mm. I genuinely really introspected this, and I I even journaled this before she came into my life, mm. and the things that I put in this journal were the, the aspects that I wanted in a in, in someone. Oh. This is the type of person that essentially came. So you really deeply thought about the kind of person that you would want into your life yes. to reinforce you as a man. Oh, 100%. Like, and I've become a more ma uh, a more masculine, a more um, a better individual from learning learning from Ratisha. And I think that's, uh, yeah, I absolutely love her. Yeah. How do you learn from someone like that? Because when I think of like, obviously there's things that people directly teach you, mm. but I feel like that's totally different from the things that you pick up and you learn about yourself from the interactions that you have with each other. Oh, you learn so much through everything and the things you have to be con conscious and you have to observe. Every interaction is a lesson, whether it's good or bad. Even the bad ones were the greatest teachers and the greatest things of growth. So obviously, like in the seven months I've known her, we've had disagreements mm. um, and we've ha had times where we've hurt each other. Yeah. But our maturity and the fundamental core values that we've established are the strength to the relationship, mm. the foundation. And then we are able to grow so much deeper from the friction. And in fact, I want the adversity Yeah. because gosh, it'll be a scary relationship if we were just all lovey-dovey for the whole time. I'd be like, what the hell is happening? Yeah. You know, there's, we're not getting on each other's nerves at some point. We're not disagreeing on something. And so in each of those moments, you learn a lot mm. about yourself. For, for 25 years, I was like working on myself and I was like, oh yeah, I'm good. The ego. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I worked on myself. Get into a relationship. I know jack shit. I'm insecure. <laughs> I am a little, a little man, a little, a little baby, <laughs> yeah. a boy. Is what yeah. I realized, and there is a lot, a lot to grow. Yeah. Talking about the problems that you have, mm. um, and not just trying to be like, oh, we never have arguments, we never have fights. I think that's the trap that I fell into with my previous relationship. Mm. At the time, I truly felt like, wow, we we get on so well because we never have arguments. But I didn't realize that because she was so subservient to me that she would always let me have my way. Mm. So she made me feel like I didn't have, like there was nothing wrong. <laughs> yeah, and even if it was something little that was more to do with her, um, she just kind of accepted it, but like, you know, bottled up her feelings and in that all, way. Bottling up will always just in, build pressure until it bursts. Yeah, exactly, you know, yeah. exactly. And then it's like, how do we all of a sudden have all these problems? Mm. So I guess it is a trade off then, right? Because that means you have to deal with problems on a much more frequent basis in your relationship. So there's ups and downs. hundred oh, percent. But isn't that life? Mm. Like why? That's the beauty of life, isn't it? Yeah. If, if everything was good, then nothing is good. I, re I can't remember who the um, relationship Sorry. expert was, but mm. he talked about progress and dealing with problems and shortening the time span it takes to deal with a situation. Mm. So at the start, it takes... It can take weeks, it can take months 
to deal with a problem that you two are facing. Yeah, yeah. And it's just about shortening that period of time. Yeah. And usually the um, catalyst to shortening that period of time is just being direct with your communication. Oh, yeah. And just saying the stuff that makes you feel insecure. Right? Oh, totally. And I know the thing is, now that I'm not in a relationship, it's so easy for me to look at this in a third person mm. and for me to see... From a th from a bird's eye perspective, your guys' relationship, and mm. just be like, yeah, I understand the dynamics you guys are going through. I see it. I'm not too truly affected by it, but I know when I'm in the eye of the storm, <laughs> when that comes to me, I'm definitely gonna come to you and ask you for that perspective oh, because totally. I won't be able to see it from my lens. The the greatest thing is like know your fight styles from whenever you're like, because I consider it as a life partnership. And I think the reason why modern society is uh, becoming more anxious and depressed is because they're chasing instant gratification. Mm. Uh, and they're through either porn or through uh, one night stands or whatever. And I don't dis, I don't, I'm not judging. That. Like if if you if that's a phase in your life that you're going through, then that's okay. Learn about it, yeah. Um, and realize that it's temporary, you know, because the true and science has shown this over and over again. The greatest studies, the 80 year study from Harvard, mm. literally, it's a study that has had multiple directors. It started from uh, a kid being born to the death of multiple thousands of people. Wow. It's a Harvard study, and. The, and there was a study on happiness. And the key indicator of the study and the key uh, learner is two things. One, people that uh, take care of their health physically mm. will last longer yeah. and are happier. Two, but the biggest one is it's your relationships. Mm. It's the deep meaning for relationships. And the one that are married and yeah. have life partnerships are the happiest and the most long living. Yes. So when you know this fact, this fundamental truth of life, why would you waste your time and energy in the instant gratification, in the chasing of one night stands or multiple mm. different relationships, when you know life partnership is the greatest health benefit to your existence? Yes. So knowing that, yeah. That's 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 why I was pursuing that, and then from there on, all the things like uh, the learnings that you get within it is is the greatest things. I think that's exactly the reason. So when I was developing special um, and trying to separate, because I I knew that this concept of having relationships is really important, mm. but there's the separation between your outer circle friends and outer circle connections, acquaintances, yeah. and the difference between your close attachments. And I was like do I really need another category? Cause I already had seven categories and I was like, this is, this is getting pretty crowded. And like, do I really need to add another one? And then what you said exactly about the fact that the happiest people, the most fulfilled people were the ones who focused on their close attachment, those deep relationships, mm. instead of just, you know, the shallow ones, yeah. because that's why exactly. I separated experience, um, with outer circle friends and attachment with deep relationships and the difference between them also being um, attachment being an essential attribute of fulfillment and experience being an elevating um, attribute of fulfillment mm, because yeah, there's that whole dynamic where it's yeah. important to have both yeah. if you want to be as fulfilled as possible because you can't just spend all your time with your partner no, but you, you also can't, can't just yeah. spend all your time with your outer circle friends right so it's about bringing the balance between those two in fact both accentuate and become better when you do them independently and come together and do the lessons yes or maybe even do those things with the partner so they can see you in different aspects yeah that are not that are novel and won't get experienced in the relationships so yeah that's that's actually something that i tried to build in built build into special where if you make different combinations of these attributes they elevate each other so that's the point of having essential and elevating so if you want to improve your relationship which is an essential attribute mm. you can add other elevating attributes to that in uh, order to find more fulfillment with it yeah. so exactly what you said is that you can find different different aspects of your partner by incorporating things like experience going on a trip mm. together by incorporating intelligence learning something together yes. yeah, yeah, um yeah. by That's creativity exactly. creating something together all of these things that <laughs> truly elevate that essential attribute of attachment and like take it to that next level whereas like if you just spend time together yes that is dealing with that essential attribute but it can only go so far mm. skydive <laughs> that was crazy man i really i really appreciate you um gifting me that for my birthday well that is nothing that was that, that was like that the most insane nothing. thing compared to what the 
what you've given me uh, this in this year of being a friend with you is priceless. I appreciate That's point it, change. I, I need to provide more. <laughs> 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 no, but going through that, going through that whole thing, I was. I was shitting myself. <laughs> like, I thought I was cool until the dude was like, okay, you're getting out of the plane. I'm dude. like... <laughs> I just, I just how quickly everyone was like... Dude, I the thought plane. they would, like, give us this massive briefing. And then they're like, oh, yeah, we're at altitude. Go, go, go. go. <laughs> <laughs> jump. And then the guy's just, like, running out. I'm like, what? I'm just seeing you. I just literally see you just jump out of the plane. And I'm like, what? I'm actually glad I wasn't too far back because I got this. I was like really enjoying like watching everything like out of the plane, and then it, and then I kind of forgot that I was actually going to jump <laughs> out of it. And then, and then when it got to it, and I saw the, fr I think I was maybe the second or the third. Um, but when I saw someone do it, I was like, whoa! Yeah. It got real tight. I was like, oh my the god! The pressure was insane. That di but, that difference of just falling. Yeah, but. Um, did they tell you to like look to the horizon? I tried to and do a look, but I really was yeah just enjoying the whole free fall. I was looking <laughs> like, down. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. looking down. I was like, whoa! And, like, yeah, getting yeah, closer yeah. to the clouds was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, hot man. That was such epic. Awesome thing. man. No, I'm gr grateful to that that with you. Is there anything else that you want to highlight on here? I, I think deep journaling has been a huge part Ooh, of um, yes. a healing journey, right? Yeah. And I, I think it's very easy to not journal when you're happy and yep. maybe just journal when times are difficult. But I think it's especially important to journal when you, you when things are good. Yeah. Because that is the time when you can really reflect um, on the beauty of life mm. and be grateful. Like really just put gratitude. Like say you got a promotion at work, say you are really good, uh, your relationship's going well, write that down and be like, I'm having the best time. Like I got to do this or I got to do that and really enjoy that because that essence of being happy is fleeting and mm. it will disappear. And when you're going through a tough time, journal the heck out of it really write it down. Mm. I didn't, I thought it was like, oh, like, oh yeah, man, I can just think about it. Yeah. No. no. There's something special about the intangible nature of your mind mm. and producing words yeah. into the physical realm. Yeah. And that medium of movement is so healing. Mm. I don't know. Call me a spiritual a spiritual man for, yeah. that, for that aspect. But yeah, it works. And I believe it. I think it doesn't. I guess the frame that I look at it now with a parent-child relationship is that it doesn't have to be spiritual. Mm. If we look at it like either metaphorically or logically, like... We all know that we act out our insecurities in a childlike manner because yeah. of events that happened in our past through our childhood. Yeah. And so our subconscious mind acts like our inner child. And the fact that we have to separate ourselves from those thoughts is like, okay, we're like the parent trying to keep up with yeah, this child who's just yeah. going crazy. And basically like you've seen uh, children who literally control their parents, right? The child ends up ha unhappy and the parent ends up unhappy. Yeah. But if the parent learns how to discipline their child in a loving way, mm. then they're both happy together. Yeah, yeah. Right? And so I think before we come of age, our parents do that for us mm. in our childhood. Yeah. They help us regulate our emotions. They help us understand what we're going through. Mm. They give us space to talk about our feelings. Da 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 da. It's so true, man. It's not spiritual. It's, it's not spiritual me at all. Helping my inner child while yeah. I journal. So thank you. Yeah. It's and it's like, parent. so that's the thing. We have mm. to become our own parents. Yeah. That's when, powerful. Yeah. I guess that's what's happening every time I'm journaling. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. And I think like, now that it makes so much sense in that frame, it's like, okay, there's so many intuitive things I can understand about what's going on in my head, mm. um, especially with things like comparison, where it's like, okay, what would happen if I compared my child to people who are so past his level of ability? How would that child feel? And so, oh, that's why I feel like I'm not getting anywhere in mm. life. Yeah right because these subconscious thoughts come up right and that's your inner child being like oh it's it's kind of like crying out it's being yeah. like um i don't feel like i'm worthy i don't feel like i'm making any progress because my parents my conscious mind is saying well is 
giving me feedback when I scroll through Instagram, like, this is what you have to look like. Yeah. This is what you have to achieve for success. Oh, da, 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 da. Yeah. Right. I wonder why people are so yeah, and disconnected. Yeah. I find that myself a lot. Mm. I find that myself a lot, especially when I look at other YouTubers in the space and stuff like that. I'm like, I can always let that inner thought take over. And it's mm. like, again, it's like letting the child dictate what I'm thinking yeah. instead. And this is... This is kind of the realization I made when I heard people like Jocko Willink, uh, David Goggins and such, even Andrew Huberman talk about taking personal responsibility for yourself. Mm. And I think it's about, again, in that parent-child relationship frame, it's about taking responsibility for your inner child yeah. and instead of them dictating your thoughts. Because your subconscious mind, your inner child, is always going to come up with these crazy thoughts like, oh, I don't feel like I'm making any progress. Da, da, da. And if I reinforce those thoughts, it will it be true. Reality. It will become true. Yeah. And if I say like, you know what? I hear these thoughts, but it's not true. You know, it's just like a yeah. parent consoling their child. They're like, you know, I hear that you feel like this, but let's actually look at the facts. That's so you know? beautiful, man. Man. I love this whole, that whole frame. And I'm really glad that I've been able to share it with you and just kind of like test out the validity oh, of it. Oh, and it's just so true when you really subscribe to it. Mm. Yeah. But as just as a final summary of Ooh, like yeah, sorry. the, no, no, just of my silver and uh, bronze medals. Yeah. Because you can see the, that they're more experience driven. Yeah. yeah. Or if you go further down, like you can see that the majority of our experience. I see. So, yes. I just want to say, like, I'm just grateful that this year has brought me a lot of opportunity to go experience life, right? Yeah. Because we can always be in this mindset of I need to be somewhere and I need to grow and I need to do this and be in the discipline and the routine. Yes. But now I get to, like, look at this life and I'm like, wow, I went to that. I did this trip and I had this dinner and I, yeah. you know, and I'm so grateful for all of that. So, And how does it, yeah. how does it feel knowing that, like, even though these are all great things, mm. the core of the most fulfilling memories you've had of the year are still almost nothing to do be. with. They will always be experience, and it's experiences all to do with... on and people. You know, it will never be like that. So yeah, I um, in that sense, I'm super grateful. Mm. Thank you. This is a great exercise, my bro. I'm so. This is so cool. Just like yeah. seeing it because this <laughs> uh, this is a framework that always worked for me, but I'm glad that I can actually <laughs> apply. We and, like, need to do this every work. year. This is oh, a tradition now. Definitely, man. Yeah. Definitely. And it has to be done in person. Definitely. So, yeah. Yeah. Is that a wrap? Yeah. Is there anything else you want to kind of highlight on this? No. I'm, I'm very content. That was awesome, man. Thank you so much. <laughs> that was mean chats. Mean chats. <laughs> mean, chats. <laughs> mean chats. Let's go. I want to hear you, Lachlan.